the 2004 Honda Accord. Got a little Mott sensor code. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, <clears throat> I cleared the code. Code resurface. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this oscilloscope up to it and see if, if the um, knock sensor is actually producing AC voltage. Um, that's specified by benefits. Um, I am gonna check the wire integrity first, see if I got some type of resistance value going to the computer. Um, if I recall properly, that uh, the sensor should not have some type of continuity or anything. But I'm still gonna. I want to check it anyway. But I mean, if it's a speaker, it shouldn't have any type of content because it vibrates. Um, oh, there we go. The uh, knock sensor. Oh, I got it right. Sits down here. A little screen there. It sits behind the starter. So you have to actually remove the intake manifold to get to it. I'm gonna uh, get my hand on the. Wiring harness. Pull it over, it should be right here in the throttle body. One of these wires. So, I'm gonna uh, pull that wire. Pull the wire and check out, find out which one it is. And uh, do a resistance check with my voltmeter. And then, um, I hooked the scope up. It's only a single wire, so it shouldn't be that hard to figure out, right? So it's a red and green wire, and that's going to be right here. I don't know if you all can see it. Right, there's a red and blue. Uh, so I'm going to back probe that. But I um, want to cut the car off first uh, and uh, clear the codes. The car has to be, mm, sorry, the setting conditions. Um, the car has to be above 140 degrees. And once you rev it up beyond 2000, it has to not detect the signal for approximately five seconds before the code triggers. So I did look into the live data pids here and I did see some type of movement but I don't know if it's just artificial that's why I, I'm going to oh so I'm going to pull the connector and make sure I just don't have like some type of voltage going through there because it shouldn't be any type of current going through it but um, I'm going to pull the Connector off, cut the car off, put the mix switch on, make sure I got no current going through it, and it should just be like a. I should just be able to. Um, I should have a resistance value, and I should be able to ground it out and get like 12 volts, I'm going to assume. But um, if I got some type of voltage, if I, if I put my multimeter on 12 volts and I um, hook it up to that, that wire going to the knock sensor when it's disconnected, going to the PCM. Um, I should see some type of voltage. At least I know there's some type of continuity there. Um, it's not a good way of testing anything, but the only thing it answers is that there's a there's you know there's a connection to a source somewhere. I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, I wish I was hooked up. Gosh, darn it. I do have a resistance value. I'm checking the resistance first. Uh, 71 kilo ohms. I got that. I'm going to change this over to a positive side and put it on um, direct current. I'll recheck it. And this is the wires going to the PCM. Like I said, it, doesn't, it just lets me know that I got some type of connection going on. I know it's a little backwards. I do got 12 volts. So at least it, like I said, it just let me know that I got some type of connection with the computer. Um, I'm going to do a resistance check anyway for the 
for that. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to show nothing because, like I said, I know it, when it vibrates, it produces a voltage signal, so it should be like tight, like open. I'm just curious, but I don't, I don't know everything I understand. So, just for the sake of knowing something. So yeah, um, checking, doing a resistance value on the uh, knock sensor is a is a fail. It was just it just shows open. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook my oscilloscope up to it and get the settings put on uh, AC voltage scale. I don't know how much voltage it's supposed to produce, but when as the as the I'll just put on auto scale, but as the as, mm, as the RPM increase, the voltage should increase. So uh, let me see what that's supposed to be like. I might have to do a little bit of uh, a little, little bit more digging and see what the voltage specification is supposed to be. But it shouldn't, I guess, fall on its face. I'm just, I'm just thinking like a like an ABS sensor. I mean, if it produces a it's like a VR sensor, if it, if it as it increases, the voltage increase. So I'm pretty sure as that. Um, the device inside that uh, the Pizio, I mean, once it vibrates, it produces more of a of a signal to where it increases the voltage. So I'm, I don't think it's going to have a have like a, a limit. But when I did look in uh, inside the uh, uh, the PIDs on the live data, it did show some signs of uh, some vo voltage. Let me get this together. Let me. Alright, so I'm gonna. I got my device hooked up. I got it on, on channel A. I'm going to put it on once it finds my device. I'm gonna switch it to AC, auto, and. Why do they have all that noise? Oh, it's probably getting the multimeter. No? I thought I was wrong. I don't know what's going through it. Is that normal? Oh. I'm going to put it on DC. On no auto. See if it reads. You know, for a boat. It's got a lot of moves. That's crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So because of my time base. All right. Um. Still, why does it have that button? That is so weird. Something's. me moving the cables what was causing all the noise and the vibration from the microphone. So me moving these cables pretty out all, all that noise. So as I pick up the cable it's starting to move. I'm uh so when it sat on the car it just kept vibrating causing interference. I'm gonna assume that's an okay All right, I'm gonna at least it's stabilized when I hook it up. So I'm gonna hook my uh, leads up. Make sure everything's hooked up properly. Going 
I'm going to take this uh, lead here and poke the back of my red and blue wire here. Produce, but I let me just leave it on the set scale. On five, on two volts. Alright, I'm gonna let me uh I wanna go back and make sure I got it hooked up like my my meter's reading properly. I don't think I went for that check first. Let me check it out. Alright, uh, meter's checking out. I'm going to go back to AC. I'm going to... I'm going to put it on 2 volts. I don't... 5 volts. I don't know how much it's supposed to produce. Oh shit, why did I do that? Drop it. So... Alright. Um, so I can change my time base. That's a little slower. So as I rev it up, it should change the voltage. I'm gonna get it on the car so I can rev the engine up. So the car's warm up now. I'm gonna put it on the car so I can rev the engine and uh, see when it sets the code and see what it's doing, if it's producing any current, and get it set up. Okay, so I'm in the car now, of course. I'm going to, I changed my, my voltage scale. I'm just gonna put it on one volt. No better yet, let's put it on two volts AC. I don't, I really don't know how much voltage we're putting out. Um, I'm gonna rev the engine up since the temperature is at optimum. Temperature for the uh, so code setting criteria, code setting conditions. So I want to rev the engine up and uh, see if anything happens. We'll go check in lights should pop on. Yep, it did. Yep. So check in light popped on, and I don't even know what in the world. Oops, excuse me. I don't even know if it was capturing that or not. I'm going to change the voltage scale. I'm going to go down to uh, 500 millivolts. I don't know if it's like Chevy and deactivate stuff when the code is set. Let me just play with it, go a little lower. I don't think it's doing anything now. Let me see if I clear the code. Anything come up? Up. Let me see what code came up. Yep, no signal. So, what I can do also. Probe the back. Do a resistance check from the sensor harness to the um, connector and make sure um, I got a good resistance value make sure that wire is not broken because I'm, I'm really not a hundred percent right now I just know I'm not getting a signal which makes sense <clears throat> that the knock sensor is not working properly because it's not reflecting here the voltage is not changing and all I'm seeing is noise um, let me see if I can get a pin in the back of the uh, sensor do a resistance check and see if I got a resistance value from the connector to the uh, second portion of the connector once the main harness alright so luckily I was able to get my 
I got an alligator clip on the pin down here. I don't know if anybody can see that. It's right there at the bottom. I was able to get my hand through the side right here. I got small hands, huh? So I got a pin in the back. See that right there. I got a pin in there and I got an alligator clip to it. I got a pin here. So I got the two hands. So I got that there and I got a resistance value of uh, two ohms. Where is it at? Show yourself. four ohm five ohms so that's a real good connection right there so this knock sensor is just going to be defective um i'm going to put a new one on there yeah you know, high quality parts from o'reilly's right so we're gonna i'm gonna go talk to the customer and get the knock sensor and i'll recheck it and show you what a normal function one looks like with the same um, I'm gonna back probe leave that probe back there and uh, look at the oscilloscope with the function unit. So I'll show you that shortly. All right, I didn't take. Uh, if you know, how to, I'll assume if you got a oscilloscope, hell, you know how to pull the intake off. But hell, I'm not going through all that. Let's pull the bolts down, take the bracket off the bottom, um, slide it back, take the vacuum line off. No coolant's going to come out when you pull this knock sensor out. It is going to be a 1 and 1 16th. And this is what I used. That small, I think about 3 inch extension. And um, broke it loose, pulled it out. About to go to my favorite part store and go grab another one. Pop it in there, replace everything, and show you the new um, voltage signal. From my oscilloscope got the uh, new knock sensor in there <clears throat> check my scan to so i know i make sure the connection fine check 14 volts make sure i got that i gotta do have it on ac um you can see a difference in the signal now it's actually waving it's all it's uh, kind of like oscillating in a way um it's on one boat right now i'm gonna give it a little bit of gas and you'll see it oscillate even more So it's at 3,000 RPM. We didn't have that last have that last time. Um, I want well, to make sure the temperature's up on this car. Let me check the uh, kids for that. Make sure it's over 140 degrees. Yep, engine coolant temperature right there, 159. So before, when I rev the gas, uh, if I hold it for five seconds above 2,000 RPM, the, act, the code would set. So right now, I'm just gonna put it on 500 millivolt. See, how, see if it'll be a little better. So I actually have oscillation now, going off the scale. Rev it up again. So that's a functioning unit right there, if, if anybody wants to know. But I'm just curious, what if I put it on direct current? Because I thought they produced voltage also. Current still oscillated. I break my scanner, it's on me then, right? So the temperature is normal, all above the setting criteria. RPM is above 2,000. Throttle's been held longer than five seconds and no code. Uh, we're going to go back to the screen here. 
so that you know what I want to show. That's fine. I'm gonna go to the knock sensor because I don't even know if I've got a video of what the knock sensor would be displayed. So if you go through your scan tool, um, let me just see what it says. I know the voltage really didn't climb it high. I should have knock sensor information down here. There you go. Not control. I'm just gonna put that up there anyway. Everything that says not, sure, I'm putting it up there. So I'm gonna rev it up. Let's see where these numbers go. Let's see if we got oscillation with that. Go ahead and enhance this. <laughs> it looks choppy. But um, but yeah, just that's a uh, fully functioning knock sensor right there. And when I did have the old one in there, I mean, of course, it didn't do anything. It didn't move. We saw, we didn't see any type of oscillation uh, when I had the scope hooked up. So I'm pretty sure it was still would reflect the same way. It's not really the same, but I mean, you can see how they spike up like that. But you'll see a flat line. You're not going to see any type of movement. So. I don't know, maybe it's a safe assumption in a way if you have your computer, if, you're, if your scan tool is showing some type of signal, but at the same time, it could be, I don't know, like a wire interference, maybe, maybe it could be, I don't know, uh, wires could be merged with another wire, which is giving them low voltage or something, I don't know, but that's the whole point of checking the wiring. Uh, that's the whole purpose of scoping it and checking right at the sensor. So, hey, but this is the information of how to uh, check it. Face and agarist.